So before I begin, I got two things I got to say. This morning it poured down rain, and I had planned on bringing this umbrella as a part of a little bit of an object lesson for you, and, and I planned that out last week, and then God said, we're going to make it rain so it doesn't look unusual for you to have an umbrella. But my other question for you is... Do you all remember seeing an old Disney film called Mary Poppins? Now the umbrella makes sense, I hope. At the end of the film, Mary Poppins left by lifting up her umbrella. Let's see if I can find the button. And popping it open. And she just lifted up and floated away into the sky as the Disney music plays and the credits roll. I bet some of you were probably wondering if I was going to lift up and fly. That would be neat. I've seen some churches with some extra wires and stuff they could make that happen. Let's just sit that here for a bit. <clears throat> that is, for me, the competing image I had to deal with whenever I encountered the ascension of Jesus in the gospel. Now, in the gospel story, we usually re read how Jesus gives his last remarks and directions to the disciples, telling them to go and make disciples of the world, preaching and teaching the gospel. Then Jesus, he begins to rise up into the sky and he disappears behind the cloud as everyone stands there quite amazed and a little confused until an angel shows up to wake the early church from its stupor. Now, when I was a kid hearing this story and also having seen Mary Poppins, all I could think of was the ending song of Mary Poppins that goes, Let's go fly a kite up where the highest heights and send it soaring. If you haven't seen Mary Poppins in a while, you might not remember that song. I don't remember the rest of the lyrics, so don't ask me. <clears throat> <laughs> That's the only time I get an amen. <laughs> That's why I decided not to read the gospel story of the ascension, but instead to focus on what's, what Paul, Paul in his letter to the Ephesians, has to say about this event. Because if we are honest with ourselves, we might need some help to make sense of what is going on here. To recap... The resurrection that we celebrated this past Easter happened only about a week ago. It feels longer, I know. And the early church, well, they were scratching their head over what that meant for them when finally, after having received the risen Christ, Jesus has to get going all over again. This time, Jesus just keeps on rising up and up. So naturally, we all should ourselves be scratching our heads trying to make sense of it like the early church did. It's a weird part of the story of Jesus, and, and it can feel a bit matter of a fact the way the gospel presents it. So now that's happened, and then what do we do? Where do we go from here? And where exactly is Jesus right now? Those are questions that I think too many Christians fail to ask, whether we ask difficult questions or not. Paul is praying for us to know more about the risen Christ. Paul prays that God will give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation as we come to know God. Now, we do need the help of the Holy Spirit to discern the meaning of God's actions for our lives today. If you casually read about the risen and the ascended Christ in story, you can quickly become confused or even put off by how outlandish it might sound. So let's start by talking about where Jesus is at the moment. Christ rose, yes, but the distance that Christ traveled was greater than the clouds and further than the moon and the stars. Jesus, who was condemned as a criminal, our friend and our teacher, has ascended. He is seated in the highest office of all offices. Or as Paul puts it, Jesus is seated at his God's right hand in the heavenly place, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. 
and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. Jesus is on the throne of heaven, not just because Jesus came back home, but because Jesus' way is God's way. And the critics who condemned the way of Christ back before Easter, they are now proven wrong. Now again, you might think that this is well and good, but isn't the throne of heaven an awful long way off from here? How does Jesus, being in the center of heaven's power, make a difference for us now? At this, and this is the crucial part of Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Jesus didn't rise for his own sake, but for us. Jesus didn't save us, but didn't just save us, but Jesus has now opened up to us, the church, power and the authority of heaven. As Paul says, God has put all things under Jesus' feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus now links us as the church directly to the kingdom of heaven. This too is grace, Grace that saves, but also grace that empowers. Jesus did not raise up just like Mary Poppins because his work on earth was done. No, Jesus rose because his work in the heavenly realm was beginning. And our work on earth, that too was beginning. The grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, they rain down on us, filling us up with with authority and, and kinetic energy. I don't know if you remember that word kinetic energy from high school, or some of you maybe, maybe haven't learned it yet. But it's that energy that makes things move. It's not the stored energy of a battery. It's that energy that moves, it keeps on chucking like the Energizer Bunny. And it, that energy, it's needed to preach and to teach and to perform acts of his, in His name. Acts that he has called you and me to do. And what Paul says are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. Now, it's typically deep thinking in Paul's letters. But if you break it down, you can find out what we need to do to access the grace and the authority that Jesus is now, is now making available to us. And how to understand this inheritance for us. We can be become enlightened ourselves and raised up by taking advantage of all that Christ has passed on to us through the church. And it's an inheritance that has not been lost or forgotten, but is still within reach. The means of grace that open us up to Christ's teachings and to God's power and authority. Prayer and study of the word. Going and helping the people that Christ himself would help when he was here on earth. And the teaching and of each other about the good news that Jesus taught us. Feeding the hungry, setting prisoners free, helping the poor and the needy. Gathering as a church and equipping yourselves on the sending message of God. Take down the umbrellas. They won't let you soar into the sky. Let the grace of God rain down over you and seep into your being. Learn how to rise like Jesus did here on earth. Salvation is just the first step in our spiritual journey. God wants us to become perfect in faithfulness like Jesus was. So look. Look now to the one on the throne, the throne of heaven. Realize the hope that is with Christ and the power that descends to us with his ascending. Discern in your hearts what that means for you as you seek to walk as disciples who make disciples. Jesus is in heaven, but we have become Christ's hands and feet on earth. So move as ones directed by the Lamb, 
the Lamb who sits on the throne. Grow into that role, and soon you will see the kingdom of this earth has become the kingdom of our God. Soon you will soar over the heights as clouds pass by and starlight shines among us. Grace is reigning over you. Grace is your inheritance. Take it up and be the body of Christ and feel the fullness of the one who fills everything. Sometimes these things that we we do in church, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain what God is doing because we feel so distant, but we are a lot closer than we realize. Heaven isn't that far off. Jesus is nearer than you realize. In the throne of heaven, we're standing in God's courtway. You never know when the grace of God flowing straight from the Lamb on the throne is going to reach you and do amazing things. Let us pray. May God bless you now with divine knowledge and wisdom. May you realize what being a church means as you take up the grace and the power of Jesus. And may God make you shine in the life of someone who needs to hear the good news. May you become Jesus' hands and feet to heal and reach the hearts of someone else. In the name of the risen Christ, amen.